Hello, we are here with Ira Perman running for the open Anchorage Assembly seat in West Anchorage. Good morning. Good morning. How Daniela. are you doing? Thank you. I'm great. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I am a 40 year West Anchorage resident. I moved up here in 1975. I drove up the Alaska Highway. I uh, had my carpenter tools in the back of the car, and I got here right at the time of the pipeline boom. And it was crazy. It was wonderful. I lived back in the East Coast, and things never changed there. But this was a real crazy boom town, and there's jobs like galore. I wasn't planning on it staying, but I made a decision to stay, and it was the best decision I ever made in my life. All right. And so why are you now running for assembly? Well, 40 years have been great. It's been a terrific town, uh, just a very strong economic town with lots of new things happening all the time. For me, it's been a terrific 40 years. I have two daughters, and my goal in running is to make this place stay that way, you know, great place for them, for their future, so they can raise their family. It's just been a terrific town. All right, and then if voters choose to elect you, mm -hmm. what will be your top priority? Top priority right now is to keep Anchorage strong. You know, I've been going door to door like all the candidates. And what's happened over the past several months is the priority on their mind has shifted. It's always been public safety and public education, two very always strong priorities. But lately, the, there's a really deep concern about what's going to happen to the economy here. People are anxious. They're anxious for their own jobs, or in my case, I worry about my kids. and. Will they hold on to their jobs and what's going to happen overall? And the major thing I, I would like to work on is getting our economy, keeping it stronger, growing it. We have some remarkable opportunities. We're not really in the same dire straits that the, the state of Alaska is, but that's going to affect us. You know, we are losing some oil jobs for sure. We'll probably lose some government jobs, but we have some really good growth opportunities, and particularly in West Anchorage. The biggest one is the airport itself. The airport's always been a big economic driver, but the airport is, is built to grow. It's sized for growth. And our cargo industry, our tourism industry, our logistics industries are strong. We need to you know, fan that spark and make them bigger. So good job's there. But there's another big, exciting area in West Anchorage, and that's just the sort of entrepreneur thing that's happening with the, the millennial generation. Um, they like to live in West Anchorage. More than any other part of town, you'll see the millennials are hanging around in the Spinard area, all over West Sand Lake, uh, the North Star area, and they really want to start new businesses. And that's the best thing we can do is to encourage them. And there are things a city can do to encourage that. Seattle and Portland, for example, have uh, incubators where they bring entrepreneurs together and they pair them up with private investors and they grow businesses. That's an important thing for us to do. We're not doing that. We could, it doesn't cost the city anything. You have that done with the Anchorage Economic Development Corporation. Build that incubation and that investment and encourage everything you can to have those young people build businesses and importantly, stay here. We, we don't want to lose them to Portland or Seattle or other places. I, I would like my daughter being here. She just moved back to town um, and she bought a house in Spinard and I want her to stay. She wants to stay, and, but that's the future. we gotta got to make it good for them. Yeah, want to keep them here. Okay, so turning to the budget, mm -hmm. how can you help the Muni um, deal with the current budget issues? Okay, um, right now uh, we are on a very tight budget. Anchorage has always had a, a tax cap, which has kept us nice and lean. And we provide the, the basic services, and we keep, a, keep the cost lid down, and that's good. Um, however, we got a situation right now, as I'm sure you know, we, we're short, we are short on police. And that's nowhere more apparent than in the West Anchorage District, where particularly on the north end, uh, down by Valley of the Moon Park, uh, on the south end, down by uh, Campbell Creek and the trails around there, we have all sorts of really difficult issues. We have uh, summertime uh, homeless camps, big ones. We have uh, spice trade, we have burglaries, we have car break-ins, tools being stolen, bicycles being stolen, and not enough police to respond. And that's really making the neighbors very uncomfortable. Wouldn't, I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, just not a, it's just not a good thing. They've got families, they've got kids, and they, they'd like to feel safer. So we need more police, more, more troops, uh, boots on the ground, as it were, or guys in their cars driving. The, the community policing, I'd love to be able to get to that point where the, the policemen can 
know their community, not just drive around, but know the beat as it were, we need to have that. Okay, now to grow the force, it needs more resources. It you sure might does. have to make cuts in other areas. Looking at the budget, where where are some areas you see right off the bat, these are some places we can cut? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I, I believe having been an assembly staffer for six years, that there are places. I mean, any department can take a little nip and tuck here. That That's a given. But when you've got a situation where the economy is slowing down and there's not as much building going on, over in the building department, the, the planning department, do we need 17 planners right now? Could we do a fewer? Yeah, probably could. Um, so you can do the, the shifts, you know, prioritize one department over another. Well, we'll have to do that. If we, if we don't do that, we won't be able to get more public, public safety people. Uh, can the Muni, should the Muni try and diversify um, the economy as far as taxes go, the tax base? Right now, the weight of taxes is on property owners. That's correct. Uh, we have a, a property tax centric uh, way of uh, funding our city government. We do have other funding sources coming in. As you know, there's uh, fees for building permits. There are, uh, when you, if you, your parking, parking tickets, <laughs> your parking meters, all those sorts of things. And yes, uh, we, we, we are doing that. Um, we obviously need to do that more and try and do it in such a way that it's, it's, it affects those who use the service rather than just broadly you know, super user fees, as it were. Okay. So you're not looking to support any new taxes like a sales tax or seasonal no, tax? No, definitely not a sales tax. Um, a, a sales tax would fall within what we call our tax cap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the voters would have to approve that. They've told us in the past that they're not going to. It takes a 60% vote to make that happen. And while a sales tax would reduce property taxes, you sort of look at your own budget and say, well, I'm buying stuff and I pay tax here. How much am I going to save on property taxes here? And just in my own household budget, I ran the numbers once, and it, it was kind of a wash. It, it, I suppose I could cut back on the things I buy, but generally speaking, it was kind of a wash. Um, the problem is it's not a wash at the city budget because it takes setting up a whole new internal bureaucracy to administer a sales tax. And I'm told that costs more than $2 million. That would be $2 million out of something because we don't have the ability to just grow the budget. So that could come out of police officers. I'd rather keep those $2 million there. Okay, the now department. you already touched on this, but um, let's talk about the tax cap. Mm -hmm. Do you support changes to the way we calculate the tax cap? Well, right now on Proposition 8, there is before the voters a way of two different ways of calculating. One is based on um, the base that you calculate the next year is based on what you did collect. And then and the other one that's if you vote yes is no. If you, <laughs> it's a little confusing. <laughs> uh, right now, uh, it's based on what you could have collected based on an assembly action mm -hmm. that took place in October and the ballot initiatives to take it back to the old original way of doing things. Just what you actually collected. What you actually collected. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, in the past, that way of basing on what you actually collected saved us some money under uh, Mayor Sullivan. He really ratcheted it down, ratchet, 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 and that definitely saved some money. The downside of that, we're down 50 police officers, okay, and, and in this bind. The assembly version um, would have cost more over the past, but to me the important thing is what's going to happen going forward? Now, right now, we are collecting and taxing at the cap, right there. And my way of looking at this, and I've done some pretty serious analysis with both meeting with Don Smith, the initial guy who founded the tax cap, our city treasurer, our city attorneys, and just my own understanding of the budget, that from this point forward, we're going to pretty much need to be collecting at the cap. So if you're at the cap and you're collecting at the cap, you're going to be calculating from that same number. We're going to, it will be very hard to bring that number down even if you want it to. We're losing municipal revenue sharing. We are losing um, a lot of different small things from the state. The state, in fact, is pushing new expenses onto us that they used to pay, as well as inflation taking a huge toll, for example, on our health insurance. We, we self-insure as a city. So I don't see where, unfortunately, we're going to be able to not be taxing right at the cap. So. It's, it really becomes a philosophical thing. Do you want to do it this way? Do you want it that way? But practically speaking, it's not going to make really any difference.
All right. And then you've touched on public safety. Yes. How do we make Anchorage a safer place to live? With no more dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be very difficult. Um, one of the things I did in my neighborhood, we, we uh, established a, a neighborhood watch program. Mm -hmm. And the idea is good in that your neighbors get together and they watch over each other. But frankly, it doesn't work so well because neighbors aren't home and a lot of crimes happen during the daytime when you're at work. So there's a new thing out there now called Nextdoor. Have you ever heard of this? I have. Yeah, Nextdoor is an is a iPhone app. And it's basically a neighborhood watch on your phone. So your neighbors, when they see something or something happens, boom, they post it. And everybody in the neighborhood that's on Nextdoor gets that. And our police department, if they're reading it, and I hope they do, they catch on to it too. And that, that's a great way for neighbors to watch over each other. And it's been very effective in our neighborhood. It has alerted neighbors to that somebody in the neighborhood now was here last night. They have pictures of them. Here's what they look like. And it really helps the police. Uh, and that's a very important thing. Our police are going to need a lot of help from us as citizens. As they try to grow the force. Okay, so the mayor's been pushing housing first. Yes. How can you help the Muni uh, deal with Anchorage's homeless population? This, once again, is a big issue in the West Anchorage area. We have the biggest homeless camps in, in the city, and they're down by uh, Chester Creek, along Chester Creek, uh, by Valley of the Moon Park, right next to the park, mm -hmm. uh, which is right next to some of the residential neighborhoods. And the folks, for example, on Aurora Street, just have that impact daily, daily. And, and there's no sanitation facilities in there, and it's just pretty disgusting. But worse than that, the folks in the camps bring in a very undesirable element. There's, uh, as I mentioned earlier, drug trade, spice trade, and those dealers are really the problems. They're the ones breaking into the cars. They're the ones stealing things. They're the ones taking things that they can fence for cash. So important for me is to find a way to move those camps and campers away. But they need some place to go, because if you push them out of one place, they'll simply mm -hmm. go someplace else. And they are, in fact, moving farther and farther south. They're now all the way out past Diamond. I know where some of the camps are. I've actually visited some of the camps. And they're just moving around. So the thing is to find an alternative for those folks in the camps. And yes, this is where Housing First comes in, which is uh, housing for the folks in the camps that they can live in. Now, granted, that's going to cost some money. You know, and it, it, it does bother me, you know, somewhat that these folks are going to get something for free that you and I pay for. That said, I do know it, it, it reduces the negative impact in the community, and it's also less expensive than the cost on our uh, calls on our police and fire department. A lot of the folks in the camps are the same as the chronic inebriates that end up face down at, at, out in Midtown Walmart. And we have to send police officers, we have to send the EMTs, often with a fire truck. And they estimate that each one of those individuals who does this frequently costs the city $50,000 a year. It's $20,000 a year for Housing First. I, th I think that's, that's something we have to do. Another housing issue, there is a shortage of housing in Anchorage and the population is projected to grow. How do you help the Muni prepare to deal with that? Well, let's hope the population continues to grow. I think that would be quite wonderful. Um, and yes, uh, there has been uh, a housing tightness until maybe about three months ago. Some of my realtor friends say, no, nah, not so much anymore. It's, it's softened up some. But let's, let's just say yes, in fact, uh, there is going to be a housing shortage. We have parts of West Anchorage that are ripe for redevelopment, and particularly along the length of Spinard Road from Hillcrest all the way out to International Airport. And that area um, is ready for higher density. And the residents there actually are quite happy with that idea, higher density on, on upper floors, businesses on the lower floors, along the public service, uh, the bus corridors. That's a good thing. And you make them affordably. They'll be smaller. They won't be on big lots. Um, but that's how you build affordable housing. All right. And how should the Muni be regulating commercial marijuana? Oh my We're going to see this whole new industry start this summer. I know lots about this because okay. uh, in my service to the Assembly as, as aide to Ernie Hall, Ernie is the chair of the Assembly's Marijuana Committee. And, of course, the whole reason that, that exists is the voters approved establishing commercial marijuana, and uh, the city has opted chosen not to opt out of that program, so we're moving forward with it. But the concerns there are, one, that it not fall into the hands of young people, and two, that it not be a nuisance and a bother on, on 
the neighbors, and that's often in the form of smoke and odors and things of that nature. So it's, those are where the regulations fall. How far away from schools do things need to be? Can you smoke inside the facility? How, does it allow to vent outside? Those are the kind of things we're working on right now. There's a lot of detail. As you know, um, license applications opened up at the state in February, and we may start to see the first businesses come into play sometime this summer. So right now, the regulations are pretty, pretty ready to go with the mind that, you know, away from kids and, you know, keep the smoke under control. All right. And the Anchorage School District wants to ask voters to pay for bonds over the yes. next six years, knowing that taxpayers will likely be paying for all of them. Is that something you support? Uh, I have a concern about that. Okay. And you've hit on the reason why. Up till now, we've had a great bargain on school bonds. The state would pick up 60% of the cost, leaving us to pay only 40 cents on the dollar. Well, the current package is $49 million, but we're having to pay the whole freight on that. And it's as if you had a, a bond that was $117 million. Now, just know that going into the polls that your property taxes are going to be going up. Even though the amount of bonds being issued is down a minuscule amount, um, your property taxes will be going up personally. I would rather the school district had taken that particular bond, which is for roads, boilers, and buses, and divided it over two or three years. So the impact on the taxpayers is not so, so high. And also that would help them pay down their debt. They have, they're carrying a very large amount of debt. They have dropped it down some, but they, could, they should take these, these years of opportunity right now to get that debt under control. Okay, and last question for you. How would you rate the mayor's performance so far? What grade would you sure. give him? So far, so good. I, I, I'm pleased that he seems to uh, be budget conscious. Not that he has a whole lot of choice because he's under the tax cap, but I, I have seen the kind of things that say he's, he's watching the budget, he's paying attention to the homeless issue, he's, he's, he's being proactive about it, he's proactive about trying to do the, the housing issue, uh, vitalized parts of town like in, in West Anchorage we have it's an older part of town and trying to make those parts not so old and for example Spinard Road he's being very careful about bond issues he's trying to he's issuing less bonds and we're retiring those are good he's, he's, he's a very um, in the community mayor I like that all right Ira Perman West Anchorage thanks for your time thank you Daniela